As you will remember, computers turn numbers into letters using a system called ASCII. But there are actually two ways that they turn graphics um, and numbers into graphics. They are called bitmaps and vector graphics. So what we're looking at here is a diagram of how for every, every bit on the screen, every pixel on the screen, it's actually either a 1 or a 0. And even that isn't strictly speaking true. That's just for a small black and white screen. But as you can see, that is a whole lot of information um, once those pixels, once you get a lot more of those pixels. And if you're doing it in colour, you'd in fact have three values for each one of those. You'd have actually 256 for the, the green, uh, RGB, red, green, blue. So you'd have three lots of numbers, um, each between 0 and 256. So it's a lot of information. Let's see just how much information you'd get mapping out every single pixel on the screen. So when we're looking here at just my screen on my laptop, it's 1,366 pixels across by 700 um, pixels down. It is in fact just over a million pixels on the screen and every single one of them has to be described with three numbers um, from 0 to 256. So you're in fact using a lot of information. When you store them, you don't want to store it to be any bigger than it has to because if it's too big, it's going to take longer to load it's going to take up more of your storage space and it's going to be slower because you're handling more information. So you guys have probably seen this effect here where you've got what looks like a nice clear photo. But when you zoom in, you can see the pixels. Now the reason for this is every time you put more information in, you actually have got more across and more up in terms of the information you're describing. So you want it just big enough to be able to see. And so that's why when you guys will take an image off the internet and then you'll stretch it out for your document, you will find that it goes all pixely because there just wasn't enough, there wasn't dense enough information in there. So that's what happens in a bitmap. So you might think, well, why do we even use bitmaps? The beauty of a bitmap is I can describe every single little individual pixel. So they're great for things like photos, but it's in fact not just a line drawing. But let's have a look at what a vector graphic is. So I'm using an online tool here called Vector. And so I'm going to draw myself a line. There we go. Like that. There we go. So there's my line. Now, the beauty of this is that no matter how close I get into that, now, in actual fact, this would be much more convincing. Oh, there we go. 94%, 200%, there we go, 700%. That is still a nice clear line. And that's because it's describing the mathematical part of, path of that line, not the individual pixels. So what that means is that it's much more efficient in terms of file size, but what it also means is because we're describing maths, we can grab a hold of it and we can make changes to it. And all we're doing is changing the maths in it. We're not actually shifting around pixels. We're just describing it differently. And so you can keep tweaking them in a way that you can't with things like photographs. So, in fact, I think that one just told me that I was, there we go, I was just under that dot. That's a handy little reminder. So these are very useful for logos and things so that you can blow them up to the size of the side of a plane without making it all pixely, which is certainly what would happen if you tried to put um, a bitmap image on the side of a plane, for instance. It would have to be incredibly high resolution, which is not to say that it can't be done, but it's a monster-sized file. So we will see vector graphics for things like these logos, which, as you can see, are clean colours and clear lines. And the place that you will see lots of bitmaps are for photos where you've in fact got lots and lots of colours all over the place and really fine detail rather than just clear lines. So all of those are certainly going to be bitmaps. All of those are certainly going to be vectors and that should be enough to let you start on your task.